In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a body you've always dreamed about in the fastest and most effective way possible by using science. If you follow my channel, you probably already know that besides doing a PhD at MIT and owning a startup, I have time for at most three, sometimes maybe four workouts per week. Therefore, I had to develop the ultimate fitness strategy for accomplishing the most results in the least amount of time. Eight years ago, I won the national triathlon championship, so doing sports has always been my passion. There may be no shortcut to looking like a fitness model, but if you base your workout and nutrition on science and research, rather than some clueless influencer's workout plans, you can get there way faster than you might think. I got a lot of requests for making a fitness video, so I initially planned on just filming a regular fitness workout vlog. But this is not a fitness channel, and also I don't think you would really learn much by just watching me lift some weights and do some cardio afterwards. Instead, I decided to make this video which will put you in the right direction to looking and being fit with just a few hours of work per week. By the way, this applies to men and women equally, and everything I'm going to say is based on studies and research. I want to use this video to explain the core principles behind fitness, muscle growth, and weight loss. And I'm also going to give you all the right resources to get you started. These principles are actually rather simple, but based on my own observations, the broad majority of people have no idea how they actually work, and therefore, they forever struggle achieving their fitness goals. So let us take a step back and ask ourselves, how did the human body actually become the way it is today? The human body was shaped through evolution, natural selection. And the evolution's objective is not to make humans look like fitness models with razor-sharp abs and beautiful muscles. Evolution made the human body very adaptable to its environment, so it would have the maximum chances of surviving in a prehistoric environment. The thing is, we don't live in prehistoric history, prehistoric history anymore. <laughs> we don't live in prehistoric environments anymore. So, assuming you have normal access to nutrition and workouts, you can shape your body however you would like to. The Homo sapiens would sometimes go days or even weeks without food, and therefore he would fully rely on his fat storage in order to survive and have enough energy. Too little fat and he was at risk of dying if there was no food for a few days. Too much fat, on the other hand, and his agility would be limited, which also wasn't favorable from an evolutionary standpoint. Muscles, among other things, are very important for self-defense, hunting, and later also agricultural work. Large muscles are very beneficial for both male and female prehistoric people because they could help them with these tasks. At the same time, having too large muscles could become very problematic during food shortages because large muscles require a lot of energy to maintain. Therefore, the human body became very adaptable to its environment. It constantly tries to keep your muscles as small as possible to conserve energy, while simultaneously keeping them large enough so it can survive in your current environment. Understanding this is key. Depending on the environment a prehistoric man or woman would be in, their body would be shaped and structured very differently. For example, a peaceful environment with occasional food, for, food, for, food shortages. A peaceful environment with occasional food shortages, having small muscles and being slightly chubby was actually ideal. On the other hand, in an environment that required a lot of fighting for survival and hard agricultural work, the body would automatically develop much larger muscles. And if enough food was present in such an environment, the muscles would become even larger and therefore less energy efficient. At this point of the video, I should maybe say for the female audience members, don't worry. What I will tell you in this video is not going to make you look bulky and masculine despite common misconceptions. Alright, enough caveman talk. It's the 21st century, so I probably shouldn't be saying cavemen anymore because otherwise some snowflake millennial will probably start a shitstorm on Twitter against me. Let's just call it cave person. Pronouns they them. <laughs> Alright, jokes aside, you hopefully have enough access to both quality nutrition and different options for workout and fitness. The thing is, evolution is very, very slow. So in the past 10,000 years, our genes haven't really fundamentally changed. So if you want your body to look a certain way, you have to put yourself in an environment where your body thinks that in order to maximize your chances of surviving, it has to grow large muscles and burn as much fat as possible. So if you live in Russia, just go to your local forest and start wrestling some bears. Or do whatever is happening in this video over here. And for everyone else, I'm now going to show you how to create this ideal environment. First off, let us talk about burning fat. Assume you had a very fun weekend, you know, a good night out, some cocktails, desserts, and you really dug in at the all-you-can-eat buffet in your hotel. And you're probably thinking, it's alright, after all, you can burn off all of these excess calories on a treadmill or by running. Right? Well, yes and no. 
As an average 55 kilogram woman, assuming that you consume an extra 2,500 calories during that weekend, you would have to jog for a full 50 kilometers in order to burn off all of these calories. And during that time, you wouldn't be allowed to eat more than your base metabolism, which, with so much jogging, you would most likely want to do. And if you want to lose, let's say, 5 kilograms of fat in total, you would have to run for almost 700 kilometers. That would take a huge amount of time from your already busy schedule, and you would be hungry for most of the time because you would be allowed to consume only your base metabolism of calories. Very few people actually have the discipline to do that. Luckily, science has the answer here. Instead of solely focusing on burning fat, you can turn your body into a fat-burning machine. That is, by building muscles. Muscle tissue consumes around 22 calories per day per kilogram of muscle. On the other hand, fat only burns around 4 to 7 calories per day per kilogram of fat. And this is just your base metabolism. During any kind of physical activities, larger muscles become very, very energy inefficient, and therefore they burn even more calories. The reason why our body keeps our muscles as small as possible is simply because for our cave people ancestors, it was very problematic if their bodies were energy inefficient. But for us, assuming you have enough access to nutrition, it doesn't really matter. To recap, losing fat by just doing cardio is very difficult. Bigger muscles are absolutely key for burning fat because they make our body spend more calories. So, now we have arrived at the most important part of this video. How do you effectively build muscles without having to hit the gym at least 6 times per week? As I said before, your body is trying to keep your muscles as small as possible, but still large enough not to endanger your inner cave person's chances of survival. Therefore, the only way to make your muscles grow is if your body realizes that its current muscles aren't strong enough to handle its everyday tasks. Therefore, the trick to developing more muscle tissue is heavy lifting workouts until you reach positive failure as opposed to low intensity workouts. I don't want anyone to get offended here. Circuit training, jogging or maybe following Pamela Rice workout videos on YouTube is surely much better than not doing anything. And also, if you spend enough time with these exercises, you will surely get at least some results. But if you want to be really effective and get the most results in the least amount of time, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, there's just no way around lifting heavy weights until you reach positive failure. By the way, even Pamela Rife didn't get her body by doing the workouts that she posts on YouTube. She regularly hits the gym and lifts heavy weights. But sadly, most people just feel comfortable doing whatever this is supposed to be because it just makes them feel good and exhausted at the end of the workout so they feel like they have accomplished something. And then sadly, after a few weeks or months, they just give up disappointed because they don't see any results. So you might already be training with weights. Or maybe you have some friend who hits the gym six times per week but yet doesn't achieve the results that he or she would like to. Why is that? It could be that the bottleneck is just nutrition. Nutrition makes up at least 50% of your overall results. But this is a topic definitely way too long for this video, so maybe let me know in the comment section down below if you would like me to make a follow-up video where I talk about nutrition. There I can talk about how I optimize my nutrition to get the most results and the best nutrition in the least amount of money and time spent. Well, let's assume that you're already training with weights and that your nutrition is in place. The key to getting real results is, yet again, based on your inner cave person. It's called positive failure. You have to get your muscles in a position where they have no other choice but growing. To explain this, let's go back to the gym. So here's an example of me doing 80 kilograms for 10 reps of bench press and try to figure out what exactly I'm doing wrong here. So what did I just do wrong? You probably heard that doing 8 to 12 repetitions is ideal, and I just did 10. And also my form was pretty good, right? The problem is that I stopped after 10 repetitions, even though I definitely had the strength to do probably 15 or 20 of them. So my muscles just said, okay, well, this was maybe a bit exhausting, but we could complete the task that the brain was asking to do, and therefore we don't have any reason to grow. We're already big enough. So instead, I'm going to increase the weight to 100 kilograms, because with 100 kilograms, at least I personally fail around 8 to 12 repetitions, which is ideal, and if I manage to do 10, I'm going to try an 11th one, and if I manage to do an 11th one, I'm going to try a 12th one, and so on. I will continue until I completely fail, I'm not just going to stop because a certain number tells me that I reached enough. Thank you. 
So as you can see, I managed to try the last one. I almost failed, but I managed to do it in the end, which is not a problem. At least I tried, even though I had horrible form with the last rep. It still made me do and push myself to the limit. These two exercises may look very similar because the difference in weight was just maybe 20%, but the difference in the effect that they have on my muscles is drastic. Because right now I feel that real burning sensation. That is my muscles starting to panic because they were not strong enough to complete the exercise that they had to do. From an evolutionary perspective, your genes are programmed in such a way that since your muscles failed, they not think that in order to maximize your chances of survival, they have to make your muscles grow more. This is a very key concept, and therefore I'm going to let young Arnold Schwarzenegger explain it to you in a more detailed way. This last two or three or four repetitions, that's what makes actually the muscle then grow. And that uh, divides then one from a champion and one from not being a champion. If you can go through this pain barrier, you make it to be a champion. If you can go through, forget it. Also, when you train, never try to save your energy in a set for the next set. It doesn't matter if you get tired, because next time if you get tired in the next set, you just reduce your weight and it's totally fine to do so. Having mentioned Arnold, I do have to emphasize that he, just as almost all professional bodybuilders on this planet, are using steroids. If they wouldn't use steroids, they would look much more normal and probably to the normal person more attractive. I personally have never experimented with steroids and I absolutely advise you to stay away from them because they can be super harmful and if you do not do it properly, they can also be very, very dangerous. In my actual workouts, I use even more advanced and more effective techniques than just lifting until failure. If you're curious about this, you can check it out on my Instagram page. At this point, I should make a little disclaimer. If you just got super motivated to lift heavy weights but you're new to the gym, be careful. To prevent injuries, you should first start with low weights and then slowly work your way up gradually over a few months to heavier weights. This is to prevent injuries in your muscles, in your bones and especially in your ligaments that first need to get used to all of this weight. Also, you should be very careful with lifting weights that are so heavy that you cannot lift them for at least 5 or 8 repetitions at a time. Finally, now that I've covered all of the basic scientific principles, let me give you some advice for your day-to-day -day workouts. And don't worry, I know that you're probably as busy as me, so you surely don't have time to work out six times per week. You don't have to. At least for the start, doing just two weight training sessions per week should actually be enough. The best strategy if you are a beginner or intermediate is implementing the big five strategy. These are five heavy lifting exercises that target all the major muscle groups in your body. I'm talking about deadlift, bench press, shoulder press, pull-ups, and squats. Each of these can be substituted with similar exercises, so I'm going to walk you through them. And with that, let's go back to the gym. First of all, there are deadlifts. Deadlifts are ideal and are very safe if you have proper form. If you're new to the gym or haven't done deadlifts before, I'm going to put a link in the description explaining how to do it exactly. If you're kind of afraid of deadlifts, then maybe you can replace it with leg press and seated rows or something like that. But on the long term, I do recommend learning how to deadlift. So next up, there's my obvious favorite, I don't really see a reason why I would take any alternatives to bench press, but obviously you can always do dumbbell presses or something like that. So next up there's shoulder press. You can either do it with barbells or with dumbbells. You can do it standing or seating, whatever is most comfortable for you. Whoa. So next up there's a very standard pull up or pull down, whatever you want to use. The problem with standard pull up is that you can only use one weight, your body weight, so you might want to add some weight if it's too easy for you, or maybe reduce the weight with some special machine or some elastic band. So and lastly we have the squat. It's honestly my least favorite exercise, but I know it's super important, so you should definitely learn how to do it safely. Sometimes you might want to have some safety bars on the side because failing a squat can be rather unpleasant. And with that, back to the studio. And all you've got to do now is slowly and carefully do these exercises until you reach or almost reach positive failure. And then, as you get stronger, apply the progressive overload principle. That is, make sure that you lift heavier and heavier over time as you get stronger. I wouldn't recommend doing the two famous Olympic lifts, that is clean and jerk, as well as the snatch. These may look cool, but they require so many abrupt movements that the risk to reward ratio is simply too high. And only once you've overcome the beginner and intermediate stage, then you should start thinking about more advanced lifting techniques, such as isolation exercises, machines, etc. But think about this more as going from 90% to 100%. And last, but not least, let's talk about cardio. Unless you want to become a power lifter, maybe don't care about the health of your most important muscle in your body, you should definitely do cardio. Here's the problem with cardio, and I'm saying this as a former national triathlon champion and someone who absolutely loves running. The problem with cardio is that if you want to build muscles, you lift heavy weights. 
If you want to lose fat, you do cardio. But look at marathon runners. Their muscles have adapted to ultra long distance running and are therefore very small and compact. Doing very long cardio sessions may result in you losing muscles. It's not a big deal, especially if your primary goal is just losing fat. So if you enjoy biking or running, feel free to continue doing so. But if you want to be super efficient, you should be mindful about this. Instead, you should focus on high intensity cardio. And when I say high intensity, I don't just mean running quickly. I'm talking about 10 to 30 seconds of all out, balls to the walls, basically kill yourself insane sprinting. After your sprint, your heart should feel like it's going to explode. You should have nothing left in your muscles after the sprint. After repeating this for a few times, your muscles energy stores may deplete by 15%. With conventional jogging, this may take up to one hour. This sends a massive signal to your body saying, oh my god, I have to immediately start burning fat to get more energy or otherwise I'm going to, let's say, get eaten by a bear. I personally really like sprinting up steep hills because it's the hardest and it puts the least amount of stress on my knees. But you can also sprint on flat grounds or just treadmills in the gym. There is so much more to learn about this topic. I didn't talk about nutrition, supplements, sleep, the shocking principle, workout splits and so many more things. Also, keep in mind that what I explained to you here in this video is the most effective way of getting in shape and looking great without spending too much time working out. If you don't really like going to the gym and really enjoy other sports way more than lifting weights, then go for it. Doing most sports is much better than doing nothing. Special thanks to CrossFit Riviera for letting us use their gym. If you live near Lausanne or Montreux in Switzerland, make sure to check them out. Here are a few must-watch clips by Arnold and Bodybuilding.com and if you really want to further educate yourself on this topic, check out the channel Atlinex.com. They have videos for every workout that you can think about. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can say thanks by giving me a thumbs up and I wish you much fun with your workouts. Take care and goodbye.